Hi, good morning, my dear friends. In my last video, part one cooling load calculation, I explained about building weather properties, asteroid climate condition, and some concept of cooling load. And now in the part two cooling load calculation, we will start with the thermal zoning concept and how it affects. Then we'll do the calculations. So as I mentioned earlier, if you enter any value in the half software, surely software will give some answer. So as an engineer, you have to know how to verify that. So thermal zoning is a method of designing and controlling the HVAC system so that occupied area can be maintained at a different temperature than unoccupied area. So I will simply explain with uh, uh, what simple example. For example, you see these uh, rooms. So here we have room number A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H till that one. So room A, B, E, F, G, H. That means except this D and except C, all the other rooms are office rooms. So the people are sitting there, it's occupied spaces. And D is the corridor, common walkway corridor. And C is the storage space. So here the, the materials, the papers, the documents, everything is stored here. So the room, uh, all the office room, I need to consider 24 degrees Celsius for the human comfort. And room C is the storage space. That means here, here I don't want to maintain 24 degree. So the higher temperature is acceptable. I can keep 28 degree here. And item number D, that is a corridor area. There also I want to maintain 24 degrees Celsius. Now consider we have a we have a package unit or AHU. So what we will do in this type of case where the where the temperature is different than the other rooms. So other similar rooms in only for that particular room we will provide a VAV. Okay. So all other rooms will supply the normal duct. So in this case we need to provide the VAV for the room number C because the temperature is different. So the thermostat the thermostat for that room is different. All other room we can use at least a single thermostat. Okay. For the control. So now let's come to the concept now. So first here. So assume we have a building like this with the 64 into 80 feet. Okay. So what we need to uh, do is this is just for your example only to understand the concept of HVAC. So you can divide the, uh, this area with the zones. For example, this this area you can consider as a zone one, and the corner of the room you can divide because this is facing one direction, this is facing another direction. So we can divide like this. So this is zone one, this is zone two. On all other rooms are comes as a zone two. Uh, again the corner you can divide. So this is uh, this is zone three. And mean I mean I'm going to uh, make the zone uh, that is facing the sun. Okay, so here it is facing the north. Here it is facing the east. So all this corner I will make separate zones. And the interior walls, which is not directly exposed, I can make it is uh, a, a, a means a full zone less. Okay, zone number five, the central area. Okay, so here zone number one to four have exterior walls which have the direct exposure to sun. So the supply air requirements for exterior zones shall be higher. Compare with the interior zones. Okay, so here what happens when the cooling load calculation always divide the building into zones. In practice, the corner room and the perimeter space of the building have variation in load. Variation in load compared to the interior core areas. So interior core areas always the temperature there will not be too much flexibility because the factors are very uh, factors are very constant in the interior zones so for example you assume that uh, you have uh, in this case uh, zone number 5 we have 2 uh, 4 and 6 there are around 6 uh, rooms are there so in your case in this 6 room also uh, you have you have the common uh, item stored so that means the cooling load output of this 6 room will be almost equal okay there will not be too much uh, flexibility in the output but coming to the exterior zones the uh, flexibility will be very high and the um, output also will be uh, different okay so you can at least uh, imagine when you when you do the calculation so the output of these rooms uh, will be almost similar if there is no special equipments are present so normally what happens for large foot uh, for large building footprints that means as i mentioned here assume a minimum of five zones per floor one zone for each exposure uh, for all direction and one interior zones okay so when you do the cooling calculation if you make the zone like this so you can you will get the air flow rate and you can compare so you can uh, just imagine how the things are working so building zone concept is clear now so now we need to see the understand the load concept okay so load concept there are two points one is external load one is the internal load the loads which comes through the building envelope is called as an external load for example if you see here building envelope walls roof floor window uh, windows door so uh, heat transfer through these items called as a building envelope that is external load and heat generated by the occupants equipment and light which is the internal arrangement called as the internal loads
So the question you can ask which load contribute more loads external or internal loads so after you get the output in half software when you compare the external and internal loads which load will be very high so that will be the question so here if you see here the external loads the is completely depend on surrounding condition that means the solar loads and different things are there that is completely ch the changeable one okay but in the internal one there is no change it will be fairly constant okay almost it will be constant if the building has similar type of arrangement in the inside okay so here for example if the project is restaurant there will be lots of appliances like fry kettle grill uh, the food warmer etc so the internal heat load is higher compared with the external sensible heat load okay so that is for i am telling for the particular application like restaurant if you go to normal villa normal project we don't have that much uh, internal appliances okay so that time uh, the internal load will be very low compared with the external load so mainly the percentage of external versus internal load varies with the building type site climate and building design so as i mentioned it's complete it depends on the internal uh, appliances also if you if you go to any uh, industrial application there will be the motor there will be power load like a motor load will be there for example lathe machine will be there lathe machine motor will be there so there will be plenty of internal loads uh, which contribute to the internal loads so that time it will be uh, higher okay internal loads will be higher compared with the external loads so it's completely depend on building type and what type of things we have so as i mentioned in my last video sensible and latent heat so sensible heat uh, because of heat transmitted through floors ceiling walls occupant body heat appliances light heat uh, solar heat gain through glasses infiltration then ventilation like makeup air so these are the things will uh, contribute for the so sensible heat and then comes to latent heat it will be because of the occupant then the outside air from infiltration and ventilation so normally if you see infiltration uh, both the sensible and latent load will happen because it is comes from outside outside air okay so in the infiltration normally what will happen the latent load will be higher uh, sensible load will be low but in other cases sensible load will be high latent load will be low okay so now let's start the calculation the first one we are going to see here is step number 2 room internal sensible load so as we discuss here what are the factors we it contribute to the internal load we will see one by one the first one is the internal people okay so now in our example we have considered that uh, room number 5 uh, that means here i will show you the example this architecture layout shows there are two king size bed okay but for this example let's assume it is four number uh, single bed okay for the bachelors okay for the bachelors are is a is a hotel so is a four uh, four single bed we are going to consider so let's see how it comes so the number of person as i mentioned it's a four single size bed so there are four people and the work activity seated at rest okay so i'll tell you the table there are different work activities there based on the activity the sensible and latter load will change okay so sensible heat gain per person we can we need to refer the page number 99 of career handbook so if you go to the career handbook there are different activity levels are uh, given for example here uh, degree of activity uh, seated at rest normally in the uh, theater and grade school even the bedroom living room it's only the seated at rest okay we will not perform any special kind of work but then next one is seated very light work like high school so will there will be slight uh, so like a very light work office work like office hotels uh, uh, colleges so these are the thing comes under office work standing walking slowly department style retail so heavy work mean you can see similar way factory work is a heavy work na people always will be keep on moving then bowling alley so bowling alley so these are the things comes under heavy work so in our case it's a bedroom so as i mentioned it is seated at rest okay so seated at rest means and here we need to see the room dry bulb temperature so we are consider here the dubai municipality temperature that is 75 degree fahrenheit or 24 degree celsius so in our case the sensible heat will be 230 okay so latent we will do the separately first is sensible we will finish all sensible heat like light uh, uh, appliance everything will finish the sensible then we will go for the latent so here i put uh, four people 
टू टर्टी बीटी पर फ्रम द टेबल सो टोटल इट इस नये ट्वेंटी बीटी पर अवर ओके सो डिसन असमशन सो दिस इज वन आफ द इंपार्टेंट पॉइंट नाउ एंड सेकेंड थिंग दिस इज यूनिट इज कम्स इन द बीटी पर अवर ओके फॉर द लोड सो हियर नेक्स्ट इंपार्टेंट थिंग इज द बिल्डिंग अक्युपेंसी इज असिम टू बी ए फुल डिसन कैपासीटी ओके सो वी के नाट फॉर इन दिस एक्सापल बेड्रूम ओके फ्रम द आर्किटेक्स ले अवट वी कंसिडर लाइक ए फोर पीपल बट इफ गो टू सम कांप्लेक्स कांप्लेक्स Come like a commercial building and this thing, uh, we cannot decide like this architecture level properly. The seating capacity. So that time, so that time, uh, you need to find out using different methods. For the occupant load, so if you have not watched my previous video, how to find the occupant load, please watch that. So there I explain the different methods and how to find out the occupancy load. Okay. So now here the design issue is, for example, you you consider one bowling alley, uh, alley like this bowling alley. So here uh, there will be uh, different rows will be there for the playing. Okay. So in our example, we will consider we have the bowling alley with. Uh, Uh, 10 lane, okay. The 10 lane bowling alley with 50 people uh, total. In the room drive temperature 75 degree Fahrenheit and estimate one person per alley. That means here, if you go down here, there are 10 rows. So each rows one person is playing. Okay. Then next thing is uh, we need to see the how many people are uh, standing. So 20 is 20 people are standing to see the game and 20 people are sitting to watch the game. Okay. So uh, in this case last one well, last time what happened is a, a bedroom. So simply they are sitting at rest. But here. They are sitting, but they are watching the game. So there will not be a complete zero level seating will be there. So standing means surely uh, it is not a it's not a zero work. There will be move, there will be slight movement movement. Okay, so we need to know how to consider the value for all this thing. So the first one is ten people are playing in each alley. So that time if you see this heavy work. What they have mentioned, the factory and the bowling alley, it comes under the heavy work. Okay, so that time, uh, first 75 degree Fahrenheit, room driver temperature. So 525 is the sensible. Uh, 525 is the sensible load. Okay, so here I multiply 10 people into 525. The next two, what happened? 20 people are remained as seated. Okay, seated but not at rest like a bedroom. So in this case, we have to see this one. It's like a very light work. Okay, but it will not come under seated at rest. Only the bedroom, living room, theater, grade school. These other things will come under seated at rest because completely zero level activity. But here the people are sitting, but very light work is happening because the people wants to move here and there to celebrate and this thing. So that's why it comes under seated very light work, and we have to consider 240 sensible. Okay, so that's why it's 240. It's not too tighting. It's not too tighty seated at rest. Okay, it's not the one. So next thing is 20 people are standing. Okay, so in the standing means uh, it, it comes like here if you see here a sedentary work. Restaurant. Okay, it doesn't comes. It doesn't comes under standing, walking slowly because why? Sedentary work restaurant means uh, normally if you see the reception, uh, the people will be slightly moving here and there uh, completely because the nature of the work. So similar way, uh, in this case, the standing means they will not stand in a place completely uh, all time. Okay, in this one, this they are watching the game, so they will they are standing, so they will move here and there slowly. That's the reason it comes under sedentary work instead of standing, walking slowly. it will not comes under this one it will come under sedentary work same similar way if you go to people in the reception that also will comes under sedentary work okay because there will be a slight movement always here and there because of the nature of the work so here i consider 280 uh, sensible and i added all it becomes 15650 bt per hour for the sensible so similar way for the latent heat the next one the next one you have to consider for the 240 min it's 180 280 min 270 525 min 925 so the latent heat also i consider like this this is for the example So the next one is the lighting load. So the Q light is equal to area of the room into light load. So area of the room means if you see in our example, it's 20 into 13 feet. Okay, it's 20 into 13 feet. So that means it is 260 feet, 260, uh, 260 square feet. Okay, then we have to multiply with the lighting load. So the lighting load you can find from different way like uh, if you have local municipality like here in the Dubai we have we have the local municipality regulation like if you see here uh, commercial public education facility uh, so all these things they have given the answer for example if it is the offices or hotel in our case it is the hotel it is 10 watt per meter square okay they have given so if you don't have any uh, local uh, municipality regulation no issue we have the uh, ASHA 90.1 so let me open that so if you see here 
here this one i taken from ash 90.1 uh, light lighting power density okay so in our case it is the hotel so let me show you here uh, so if you if you see here the hotel or uh, motel or guest room it is 12 so 12 the unit you have to see that the unit is very important because here the answer they have given in 12 watt per meter square okay so we need the answer in 12 uh, now we are doing all the calculation in feet square so we need the answer in feet square w over feet square so anyway 12 watt per uh, 12 watt per meter square it comes nearly one uh, one feet square one watt per feet square so we can come uh, we can consider that answer so it is exactly uh, 1.11 watt per feet square okay for one uh, 12 watt per meter square so i just uh, put the answer 260 is the area of the room then uh, one is the uh, lighting load so totally it is 260 watts okay so now we are doing the calculation uh the uh, all the q we are finding the q value that uh, unit is bt per hour okay so here the unit is uh, watts so i will convert this to bt per hour so you can, one watt is equal to 3.41 bt per hour so you can convert this one to uh, bt per hour okay so normally what happened the fluorescent light the floor fluorescent light which we are uh, keeping in the room the fluorescent light converts 25 percentage of power input to the light and with about 25 percentage being dissipated so the dissipated heat creates the load okay that, that is important for us we as a mechanical engineer we don't need to consider about the power input that is what our electrical team gives so we don't have any concern about power input our concern is the power output that means the heat dissipation Heat, dis heat comes from the uh, appliance or uh, light or anything okay so here around they are telling around, around 25 percentage being heat is like dissipated to the surrounding spaces other 50 percentage is uh, dissipated by conduction and convection okay so this 25 percentage is the radiation and the other 50 percentage is the conduction and convection so these are the heat dissipation uh, contributes the load for us okay and one important thing here is uh, when I see some uh, design reports, the people have considered, for example, here I consider the room area, I multiplied it 20 into 13 feet, okay. So it was 260 feet. So when I see some design report, the people are considering the, dis uh, the area of the room from outside. For example, like here, from this outside wall to this outside wall and similar way this outside wall to this outside wall so it's it's not about the outside wall because we are doing the load calculation we need to consider the internal uh, walls only for example the actual method of uh, calculating the area here is we need to consider the area from this this place to this one as a width and from here internally at this place to this place okay so we need to consider the area like this and for same time so if you see here so there is a permanent uh, permanent column is here okay so you can uh, omit this one so you can consider the area from exactly this point to till this point okay you can omit this uh, column so because uh, sometime there is a chance the people will consider from the column center like this so that's uh, no need to consider like this so you can omit that one and you can consider from this end huh? so end, this end to this end okay so this is the way to perform the room area uh, because if one room no, not an issue if you have around uh, 100 or 200 rooms in the big hotel this all this thing properly consider so that's what I'm, i I, uh, I want to add you here so the important point here is uh, for all these points uh, we are going to discuss i have added the backup uh, backup calculations backup design concept uh, ideas and everything so it can i cannot complete uh, all this thing in a single video it will be very lengthy so i will continue in the next video with the different parts okay so i believe that if you complete uh, this complete set uh, you will surely become you will surely get a very clear concept of hvac cooling load calculation and whatever the project you are going to do in the future uh, if you know this concept, you will surely make a very clear and accurate result. So, let's see in the next video. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.